most important fight, one of the much anticipated bouts of uh, bout week number 16, and this is a bantam with contests over six rounds. Officials for the bout, we have Judge 1, David Mills, Judge 2, Confidence Yako, and Judge 3, Matango Obey. Now, introducing the box of fight in out from the blue corner, and this evening is for it in the black and red trunks, black and red shoe, yellow gloves to match. And this is one of the boxers who has been penciled down as a prospect world champion in the making. There is a young boxer with a weight of 125 pounds, official record of five fights, no defeats, no draw, five wins. And all the wins came by way of knockout. And this is a boxer from the Upper West region of Ghana. His parents are currently based in Sunyani in the Bon Alpha region of Ghana. Presenting to you the boxer from the CBU Boxing Gymnasium here in Accra. Now switching over to the red corner. And this has been sworn in the blue and white trunks, black shoe, and yellow gloves to match. He is a boxer with a weight of 118 pounds from the Sonia Boxing Academy, the gymnasium that is sitting on the leg table. This is a boxer with a record of one fight, one win, no defeat, no draw, and the win came by way of knockout. Presenting to you, the boxer, Godwin. And the man in charge of this fight is Richard Amivy. Katie and Counter yeah, Tough Mouth coming up with the Phantom Weight category. Whatever I say, you must be. When Scared I say, for six rounds. When I say stop, stop. That's good. Sonia taking on Sea View. Center referee Richard Amevi gets us ready. Action all stations. We are about to begin. It's Godwin Tete taking on John Azili. Godwin Tete is representing the uh, Sonia Jim. And Sea View is represented by John Zile. John Zile is in the red trunks. Bantam weights here to show what they are made of. And that's uh, near side. Ankara said. The battle in the bantam week, the battle for supremacy, you have no idea. We've seen these two boxers in the Deluxe Professional Boxing League, not once, not twice. Like I said earlier on, we are gradually separating the men from the boys. What has been said about Sea View's uh, John Zile? He's one of the tough customers that comes from the Sea View uh, gym. And what what makes it a lot more interesting is the fact that these are boxers who have the potential. These are boxers who are clearly knocking on the doors of uh, Stardom. What body shots there from uh, Tete? By the way, John Zile came, uh, came into the ring or comes into the ring at a weight of 125 pounds. Godwin Tete is the lighter of the two. He tipped the scales at 118. But I like the hairstyle of Godwin Tete.
shot to the uh, body of Tete. Zile being very careful. Four punches there, both boxers being very, very cautious. As we get into the last few seconds of the first round. At the right progresses. Here comes round two. Temporary halt and Memphi wants the right thing to be done. Earlier on, we told you about a super middleweight bout for the uh, WBO African title. Mileji lost the opportunity to clinch the title in far away Namibia. He may have lost the bout, but obviously not disgraced. And all he has to come back and uh, train a lot more harder to get himself well prepared for his second shot. But Team Meleji, I can tell you for a fact, are watching the Deluxe Professional Boxing League live in the comfort of their hotel room in Vintuk, as the capital of uh, Namibia. Congratulations to the team that went out there, matchmaker Mubarak and Paul. You played your part. But back home in Ghana, back home at the Bukum Boxing Arena, is John Zile and a certain Godwin Tete battling for supremacy. Good body shot there by Tete. Zile goes in now, trying to work on the body of Tete. Tete does the opposite, also working on the head. And again, don't forget, Zile came into the ring, the heavier of the two boxers. And uh, obviously, Tete's movement showing a lot of flexibility, a lot of ease. As Zile works on the body of Tete. Miss from Zile, but continues with the approach. The upper from Tete didn't go through. Zile's guard quite up and tight. It's been 15 fight nights. Today is the 16th. What a journey it has been. Right from fight night one, boxers showed a lot of excitement, a lot of promise going into the league system. And you know, this goes back and claims it is not good for him. He must come to the party because John Zill is chasing him all, all around the ring. Boxers continue from uh, where they left off in the second. It's round three, scheduled for six. Bantamweight contest. Godwin Tete in blue. John Zile in uh, red. Zile tries to open up. And again, a wild miss. That continues with the process that goes in for a play.
boxers have uh, clearly missed a couple of some good punches. Could have caused probably a negative effect. But Zile again pushes forward and uh, Tessa does the smartest thing, goes in for the clinch. I like the composure, very cool, very tall, using the jabs to get himself out of trouble. Zile still comes forward and again, Tete goes in for the clinch. He's been super smart. Like a low blow there from uh, Zile. But they're not too worried about that. He still continues with the jabbing. And then anytime John Zile comes close, he does the wisest thing, goes for the clinch. Very clear and obvious that Tete doesn't want to go into the infighting with John Zile. But that's what is for a few marks there. Some shots to the uh, head of Zile. Zile comes forward. End of the round from, from the first minute to the third. Yeah. It was all about the place, didn't it? Yeah. Bounce continues in earnest. This man, Tamweight, is uh, left up to the billing. It's the fourth round. It's scheduled for six. Quick hold up. Laces have to be tied up well for Tete. Anyway, again, from a distance, you have observed this fight from the onset, the very first round. Tactics being employed by both boxers seem to be working for them. Zile comes out, he's smart, he's quick, throws in the body punches. Tete goes in and scores a few of those jab points. And then anytime Zile comes forward, a clinch. You know, we have two different fighters on board here. When you look at John Zilli, as you made mention earlier, in terms of the weight, he's much heavier than his opponent. So you can rely, he can rely on his powerful punches. And every time you see John Zilli going on his opponent, he's striving on the power punches because he knows he has a lot of hefty punches than his opponent. When you look at Gordon Tete, Gordon Tete is the kind of fighter who likes to rely on the hit and don't get hit. That is a smart way of boxing. Yeah. Brilliant and intelligent way of boxing. Any fighter or a fighter that I've seen that he has really succeeded in that kind of fighting skill is Floyd Mayweather Jr. He always rely on that kind of style. He hits you and he makes sure if you are coming to hit him, then he weaves himself away from the danger zone. And that is what Gordon Tete is doing. But John Zilli has seen that Gordon Tete is hitting him and is driving away from the danger zone. So John Zilli is now trying as much as possible to catch the ring size and in catching the ring side, he's tracking and tying his opponent down. And that is why you have two different fighters on board and it's really, really interesting watching them. Two different fighting styles and two different boxes. Tete is obviously being smart in this bout, trying to avoid the big bombs. Oh, he takes a slip and goes down, but he would have to go through the mandatory eight. You know, Prince, this was something that was coming because John Zilli knows that Godwin Tete doesn't want to go in for the bull fighting. You know, the bull fighting is standing toe to toe, hit me and I also hit you. And you know, Gordon Tete has always been avoiding that kind of bull fighting since the start of round one. 
And John Slay has gone out told him that, you know what, Keta is avoiding that kind of boot fighting. Take the fight to him. Make sure you track him down and make sure you hit him on a defense break. And that's what we saw in round four. That Boring Keta has hit the canvas. But John Slay is trying as much as possible to kill the fight. But Gordon Tete is making it difficult for John Zilli. Temporary break once again. We need to take the gloves quite well. And John Zilli at this stage taking instructions from his corner. He's agreeing with what they say. He knows what to do, he says. At this point in time, Prince, you can see that John Zilli's corner is telling him something and is really loading to a positivity. Let's see what he can bring on board. Uh, we have a last couple of seconds left, round four. But I feel Gordon Tete to miss it, stand his ground because John Zile really, really want to go in for the kill. Let's see what happens. This round obviously will count as uh, a round for John Zile for the uh, knockdown. Misses with the right, connects with the left turn. And like you said, tries to cut the ring to size. And then Tete goes for the safety end of the round. Tete goes. Six minutes more. Let's do the first three out of the six as we hit the uh, fifth round. And, uh, I, I think that in the fourth round, uh, Godwin overdo. Uh, uh, the twenty. You yes, As much as he used it in the third round, it worked because at that time he would jump and then go back and then when he comes. But this time it was it was not jabby, but going for the twenty. And then uh, uh, John realized that George and uh, give him give him that killer point that to him. But this, this the fight is too close. Oh, the fight is too close for him to be going down. Yeah. The corner of Tete urging him to rather go in and do a lot more punching. Good combination. And at this rate, obviously, John Zio will be much more comfortable the way the fight is going. He believes that he has the fight under wraps, under his uh, control. I don't see anything different that Tete has to offer. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that at this moment, we are seeing the experience of John Z. That is what is that is what is happening now. Okay. He is showing a lot of experience. Okay. Fortunately for him, he has power in addition. Sure. So he uses the experience and go with power. So you see uh God with that uh, with some small small jabs. And when you look at those jabs, it's not a jab that scares John Z. Mm. So it will always come because your jab is not even that effective. Unfortunately, you are not throwing that right of yours. You are only jabbing. You understand? That is why it's giving too much chance for John Z to come in. And John Z with the experience is showing class at the moment. John Z showing class at the moment. Tete has put up a good fight. Strategy has worked for him. Kept himself out of danger. And then when he gets the break and the opportunity, lands a couple of his own. Tete is not perturbed at all. Into the last 10 seconds, and again, the frustration on the part of John Zeal. He's not being allowed to, look, to do what he knows how to do best. 
And just when he comes and he makes us, he jumps and makes sure when throwing a punch that he counters you. But I don't see God in church doing that. He always moves from left, right, and making sure he hits and don't get hit and going back. But if you are doing that hit and don't get hit stance, then you need to go in for that counter attack and skill too. And that is what Floyd Mayweather Jr. has yeah. been doing so many years and he has succeeded. So if Gordon Tetan needs to stand in that hit and don't get the style, then he should capitalize on the counter attacking game too as well. He's got three minutes. Or less than that. Zile. Missing a few of those punches. Frustration gets him. He just wants to nail Tete once and for all. Okay. Tete watches him closely. He walks out of trouble. Or where he cannot do that, he goes in for the clinch. Forward thrust by John Zille since round one, since the bout began. Not afraid to go forward, almost always uh, daring to do just that. Tetra plays on his uh, sly, his slyness, and the way he can move, avoid the big shots, and then land a few of his own. And then also uses the clinch to his advantage. There we go. John Zilli gets a little bit frustrated, and you saw the grimace on his face. You know, Prince, Gordon Ketan needs to be careful because as it stands now, John Zilli is very much growing in confidence. I mean, it's overconfidence in my side of view. And that is why I'm saying that Tete should capitalize on the counter attacking because John Zilla, as he stands down, he's overconfident. He knows that Gordon Tete is weakened by the kind of punches he's giving him. And if Gordon Tete is to just capture or catch John Zilla with a counter attack, that is when John Zilla will see that, hey, you know, this guy still have certain counter attacking game that I have not seen. And that could catch John Zilla with a surprise. So, Warren Tete should capitalize on the counter attack because John Zilla is really moving forward with punches. And when a boxer is moving forward with punches like that, sometimes his defense is loose. Counter attacking game can really punish him dreadfully. Oh, there was a smile and a wink on the face of Tete. I'm sure the corner is quite happy with his ability to get himself out of trouble with a clinch. And it looks like he's not going to dance around it's the, the last couple of seconds till the end of the round. Just look at them. Very good boxes. Zile believes he's won. So that's his opponent's better. Now, Judge Uwan, Devin Mills. Spread about 55 to 58. Judge 2. Clement Sean. Spread about 56 to 59. Judge 3. Nathaniel O'Brien. Spread about 55 to 58. By a unanimous point decision, the winner presenting to you, ladies and gentlemen, John Zilli. Well, John Zilli has picked the win.